Today's Mass Readings and Gospel Reflection February 17, 2021 Ash Wednesday The Beginning of Lent We bless your name, O Lord, for sending your own incarnate Son to become part of a family, so that, as he lived its life, he would experience its worries and its joys. We ask you, Lord, to protect and watch over this family, so that in the strength of your grace its members may enjoy prosperity, possess the priceless gift of your peace, and, as the church alive in the home, bear witness in this world to your glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. At the beginning of Lent, on Ash Wednesday, ashes are blessed during Mass, after the homily. The blessed ashes are then imposed on the faithful as a sign of conversion, penance, fasting and human mortality. The ashes are blessed at least during the first Mass of the day, but they may also be imposed during all the Masses of the day, after the homily, and even outside the time of Mass to meet the needs of the faithful. Priests or deacons normally impart this sacramental, but instituted acolytes, other extraordinary ministers or designated lay people may be delegated to impart ashes, if the bishop judges that this is necessary. The ashes are made from the palms used at the previous Passion Sunday ceremonies. The act of putting on ashes symbolizes fragility and mortality, and the need to be redeemed by the mercy of God. Far from being a merely external act, the Church has retained the use of ashes to symbolize that attitude of internal penance to which all the baptized are called during Lent. From the very early times the commemoration of the approach of Christ's passion and death was observed by a period of self-denial. Saint Athanasius in the year 339 enjoined upon the people of Alexandria the 40 days fast he saw practiced in Rome and elsewhere to the end that while all the world is fasting, we who are in Egypt should not become a laughing stock as the only people who do not fast but take our pleasure in those days. On Ash Wednesday in the early days, the Pope went barefoot to St. Sabinus in Rome to begin with holy fasts the exercises of Christian warfare, that as we do battle with the spirits of evil, we may be protected by the help of self-denial. First reading A reading from the book of the prophet Joel Joel chapter 2 verse 12 to 18 Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, with fasting, and weeping, and mourning. Rend your hearts, not your garments, and return to the Lord, your God. For gracious and merciful is he, slow to anger, rich in kindness and relenting in punishment. Perhaps he will again relent and leave behind him a blessing, offerings and libations for the Lord, your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Proclaim a fast. Call an assembly. Gather the people. Notify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children and the infants at their breast. Let the bridegroom quit his room in the bride her chamber. Between the porch and the altar let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare, O Lord, your people, and make not your heritage a reproach, with the nations ruling over them. Why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? Then the Lord was stirred to concern for his land and took pity on his people. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm Psalms chapter 51 verse 3 to 4, 5 to 6 a.b. 12 to 13, 14 and 17. Let our response be, Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt and of my sin cleanse me. Response. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. For I acknowledge my offense, and my sin is before me always. 
against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. Response. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Response. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Give me back the joy of your salvation, and a willing spirit sustain in me. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Response. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Second Reading A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 20 to chapter 6 verse 2 Brothers and sisters, we are ambassadors for Christ. As if God were appealing through us, we implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Working together, then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, In an acceptable time I heard you, and on the day of salvation I helped you. Behold, now is a very acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The Word of the Lord. Gospel Reading A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Matthew chapter 6 verse 1 to 6 and 16 to 18. Jesus said to his disciples, Take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise, you will have no recompense from your heavenly Father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets to win the praise of others. Amen, I say to you. They have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right is doing so that your almsgiving may be secret, and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on street corners so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door, and pray to your Father in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance, so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen. I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, so that you may not appear to be fasting, except to your Father who is hidden, and your Father who sees what is hidden will repay you. The Gospel of the Lord Before we proceed with the video, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Also, please hit the notification bell, so you won't miss out when we release new videos. Feel free to share your comments, suggestions, and reflections at the comments section down below. Thank you and God bless. Now, let's proceed with the video. The Reflection on Today's Gospel You may not be able to accurately judge a book by its cover, but you can know something about it, like its title and author. The same is true for people. You may not be able to judge someone quickly, but you can know something about them by the way they look and dress. For example, when someone wears a Dallas Cowboys jersey with Tony Romo's number on it, it means they are brave or looking for trouble. If you come across a kid wearing a Texas Rangers baseball cap, it means that kid forgets and forgives easily. If someone wears a Mavericks jersey, it means they expect some respect. If someone wears ashes on their forehead, it either means they have come out of a fire alive or they are an acknowledged and repentant sinner. In this case, both possibilities would not be far from the truth. On this day, Ash Wednesday, we have walked out of our burning home, alive and walked straight into the burning bush of the Lord. Today, 
we have humbly acknowledged our failing and have asked the Lord for pardon and strength. It takes a humble individual to acknowledge his or her sins. But the truth of the matter is, we are all sinners. And the truth of the matter is, we don't all believe it. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Last year, on Ash Wednesday, an old lady came up to me to receive her ashes. As I was placing the ashes on her forehead, I said to her, Remember that you are dust. But before I could finish, she blurted out, And so are you. I told her, I know I am. That's why you see ashes on my forehead too. For some reason, we love to point out the defects of others. For the very same reason, we have a hard time pointing out our very own. The reason for both is the same. Pride. Why do we do what we do? Please don't come up to me and say, So, what are you going to give up this year for Lent? Don't ask me. Ask instead, Who do you want to be during Lent? That's the question. And the answer will determine what I should give up for Lent. Why Lent? Why even bother? Christians did not invent personal reflection time. Christians were not the first to say to the human race, Seek silence, solitude and simplicity in order to better yourselves. Since the beginning of time, men have reflected. The Greeks reflected just as well as the Romans. Barbarians and atheists reflect too. Even Adolf Hitler reflected about his life and struggles a great deal and wrote about it while he was in prison. But what were Hitler's struggles? Was he struggling on how to save lives or eliminate them? Hence, the problem with journaling. If our reflections only reflect ourselves then we reflect like a mirror. What is missing is a standard. Something like a star to point to. Something or someone to strive towards or to bounce ourselves off of. What is missing is someone that can tell us if we are truly progressing or messing around. We all need someone like a rock. Ashes on my forehead remind me that I belong to the human race but that I am striving towards a higher standard. But who? Lent presents itself as the perfect season to get away from the crowd, as far as possible from humanity. Throughout the centuries, individuals have used philosophy as their star, a guru as their goal, a Buddha as their rock, or a Muhammad as their prophet, and I believe it helps them to get further away from the crowd, but in the wrong direction. To be a faithful follower of a certain philosophy, or guru, or religion could very well lead to the destruction of the human race. But to be a faithful follower of Jesus Christ, to live by his words and example, could only mean a love for all. Christians seek Christ, and I believe Christ will get you to the highest point, the greatest point, and the furthest possible point away from humanity by bringing you to the heights of the saints, and depths of your own humanity. There is nothing more tragic than an elderly individual who looks back on their life and regrets the decisions they made. How can one avoid this? What is the solution? Christ is the solution and Lent is the means. Take some time every day to reflect on who you are and what kind of person you have become. But your reflection must include Christ's life and the decisions he made. If I notice a difference between myself and the Lord, then I need to bridge this gap. Then, and only then, can I be sure that I am living my life with the highest standard of living.